Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. This has been one of my favorite weeks in gaming so far this year because I got to return back to a game I loved a couple years ago. Cyberpunk 2077 was one of my favorite games back in 2020. I fell in love with the open world, the characters, and the role-playing elements that suited the atmosphere so well. Last week, CD Projekt Red released an update known as Update 2.0, and honestly, I wasn't ready for all the incredible changes that this brought to the world of Night City. They recommended returning players create a new playthrough to experience all of the changes implemented, so that's exactly what I did. And already, I've poured over 40 hours so far into my newest playthrough, and I'm still finding more and more secrets in Night City that I never got the chance to experience before. I've even played a little bit of the newest expansion, and it just amazes me how much detail and love CD Projekt Red poured into this game over the years. The devs really outdid themselves with this update, though. They completely overhauled the police system within the game. Cops now feel like they're more fair as to how they handle crimes within Night City, as well as chasing you down whenever you commit a crime. Something I noticed right away is that if they spot you, they will begin to relay information through the radio, and update units on your location and the severity of your crimes. Different types of units will pursue you depending on the amount of stars that you've gained, and the police will effectively gather more resources to stop you. They'll start to create roadblocks, and even send in max tag to your location to put an end to your murderous ways. However, as crazy as that may sound, the police are in no way as bad as they used to be. Cops will now patrol at a normal pace down the city blocks instead of the time-warping Terminators they used to be. And the only police that pose a real threat are the Netrunners and the Max TAC officers that basically land on your location. For those that don't know, Max TAC officers are reformed cyber psychos, so they have just as much chrome in their body as you do. Not only can they really fight you, but they can also tank a ton of damage. Not to mention that they also come in a group of various specialists, each challenging you in different ways and are more likely to end your crime spree very quickly after they arrive. Trying to run away from the police has been one of the most fun experiences I've actually had in Cyberpunk. The intensity doesn't let up and it will honestly keep you on your toes, especially when you're trying to hide. Along with this new update, we've gotten a complete change to how vehicles behave and operate. Some cars are now equipped with weapons and you can also use your weapons while driving. Not to mention that vehicles can now be disabled by blowing out their tires, and they can also even be hacked into and controlled through your cyberware. In my current playthrough, I went with a Netrunner build because I really wanted to try out being a ghost in the machine, relying solely on being covert when it came to infiltrating areas and breaching enemy weaknesses. This update towards vehicles changed a lot for adaptability within certain scenarios. Vehicles can now be quick hacked, meaning whenever I would be chased, I could also stop them in their tracks and even cause their car to self-destruct with a simple quick hack. Car chases quickly became one of the coolest features in this update for me. Sometimes in the middle of delivery missions, rival gangs or even police would start assaulting you and trying to run you off the road. This alone helped me immerse myself just a little bit more in the chaos that ensued within Night City. Also, gangs are more prevalent across the entire city, and all of the NPCs have gotten improvements from combative behavior to enhancements with cyberware. For instance, enemy combatants can actually use their own to invest in cyberware to counter you, making small gunfights a little bit more interesting. One of the main reasons I went with a Netrunner build was because I heard this update changed how Netrunning works. Perks have been expanded allowing for more optimal choices in quick acts and even grant the use of overclocking which has been a blast to abuse. When you overclock you enable your health to take the place of your RAM slots, meaning you can use high end quick acts to take down enemies without having to worry about the amount of RAM you have. Something else I learned to abuse was queuing up multiple quick acts that work in unison. For instance, if a person's being hit by contagion and you queue up overheat, well, now that enemy is turned into a bomb. Or, if you want to go for a less lethal approach, you can always queue up Memory Wipe followed by Reboot Optics and Sonic Shock. This will completely incapacitate an enemy without killing them. I found Netrunning to actually be more fun to approach this time around because of how much it's changed within the perk system. But this goes for pretty much any build that you want to make in the game now. CD Projekt Red actually remade the entire perk system to be a more concise skill tree that expands in ways to help you shape your version of V into something a bit more understandable, while also making sure that you feel the power trip as you put your points into your favorite attributes. Every choice has a little bit more meaning behind it because right from the beginning, you're creating small choices that will eventually branch out to have more impact as you grow. The perks that are earned after maxing out your attributes are incredible too. They finally found a way of giving the build that you made more identity with how you like to play and I'm all about it. CDPR finally got rid of some of the out of place implementations like buying grenades and health items. Now they recharge and have a place within the perk system as well, allowing your items to be more effectively used and can even be substituted within your cyberware. Speaking of cyberware, I really love what they did with the entire design here. 
Starting out, you only have enough space for implants because you're not really outfitted for the use of chrome. But as you progress and grow within your attributes, specific perks can grant you an increase in the amount of cyberware allotted. This number fluctuates but also has a limit that can't be crossed. Improving the capacity makes room for both more armor and more augmentations for your implants. Perks can now open up specific slots dedicated for your body, such as the ambidextrous perk which allows you to have two implants in your hands, making space for a smart link and for whatever else you might want. Also, your cyberware grants you armor now that's based off of the specific chrome that's going into your body. This is your basic damage reduction in cyberpunk now. You can even make a tankier character depending on the amount of armor given from the choices of your cybernetic implants. Something I also loved was how they implemented a system assigned to attuning implants to your attributes. Meaning the higher your attribute within that attuned cyberware, the better the bonus stat becomes. Each attribute grants you different bonus stats collectively making your character's cyberware even more impactful with each upgrade. There's also been a huge balance pass that has made the game much more enjoyable if you ask me. NPCs for example are now scaled to your level and aren't dependent on the area of where you fight them. This allows you to freely explore all of Night City without worrying about stepping in the wrong part of town and getting decimated in the process. But this also means that enemies will become stronger as you do. They will have upgraded cyberware and pose more of a threat when it comes to taking on multiple enemies at once. Weapons have now been scaled to a damage tier and are no longer upgradable unless they're iconic weapons. This is a welcome change because as you level the loot becomes better, meaning you'll save on upgrade materials and spend more time crafting items worth making a difference. Crafting has become a very easy and accessible way of improving your time within Night City 2. I spent most of my time crafting new quick hacks or upgrading some of the game's iconic weapons that kept me afloat through most of my playthrough. I opted in for receiving more components upon dismantling weapons so I would never actually need to find upgrade materials naturally. This update has brought so much into the game, and while I could cover just about everything, there's a lot I hope you find out for yourself. This felt like I was basically playing a completely new game at this point. While the missions are the same in dialogue and decisions, the world around you is very different and much more fun to be a part of. In all honesty, everything in this update has been breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking! The game feels better than ever right now, and I can't stop playing it. If you're at all interested in seeing my impressions going forward with the Phantom Liberty expansion, then please leave a like on this video. I really hope you get a chance to explore this new definitive version of Night City, because it's been a wonderful experience so far, and I can't wait to get through the expansion in due time. But for now, I'm going to continue doing some more gigs and some side quests. Anyways, my name is Zen, and I hope you enjoyed your stay. I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Take care.